Welcome back to the Budding Author Podcast with me, Simon Ward, your host. Today, we're talking to Joanne Paulson, author, editor, and journalist. How are you doing, Joe? Hello. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you, Simon? Oh, in England, we rarely have any nice weather, but today it is lovely. 26 and a half. 26 oh, that and is half. lovely it's for like... England. Yeah, it's it about is. the same here, but it's so humid, it feels hotter. Yeah, it is quite humid here. I had a nice walk earlier on, so that was uh, that did me some good. Right then, um, you're having a good time of it, aren't you? I beg your pardon? You're having a good time of it. Your uh, books are selling quite well. Oh, well, you know, it comes and goes. And when you launch a new one, things pick up somewhat. I haven't uh, published anything in a, oh boy, a couple of years, I guess. Um, but I'm working on two now. So I'm, I'm hoping to uh, change my mm, dearth, of <laughs> dearth of new books over the last couple of years. The, um, the Adam's Witness series, um, particularly the first one, um, 533 reviews on Amazon. That's um, yeah, on Amazon UK and Amazon Canada. Yeah. yeah, it's a little better on Amazon.com. Oh, got you know, I was just looking. Oh, so that's even better then. So that's really good. Yeah, it's it's very nice to it's very nice to have those reviews, I must say. But you know, I, I'm not sure where the line is where reviews come in. Uh, handy for sales and where that stops and unless you have thousands of them you know I, yeah. I don't I think after I got about to 250 it didn't seem yeah. to make much difference uh got you okay well I'm I'm not anywhere near there so people must read my books and give me lots of reviews that would be nice <laughs> it's so hard to get them and it gets I think it gets harder and harder I you know um when I launched Adam's Witness, I got a lot of reviews very quickly, and it's I'm finding it's harder and harder to get them in subsequent books. So I don't know, different time maybe, yeah. different era. I don't know. Um, I like what you've done actually. Be, uh, thrilling mysteries, crime, romance. Um, so you're quite multi-genre, really. Yeah, there. Yeah, the Adam's Witness. Uh, Adam and Grace series, I guess, uh, is a bit of a mashup of uh, uh, it's a, their police procedurals and mysteries. And there's a romance that goes through the arc between the police detective and the reporter, Grace Rampling, mm -hmm. um, which will be completed in the book I'm writing now. So it'll be a, a six book arc when I'm uh, finished. Yeah. I, I'm not saying I'm going to necessarily stop writing about those characters but that will be the series arc completed so to speak right um yeah. and so yeah some people get confused <laughs> i guess about the mashup of genres i uh, i hear that could be a problem but i am not able to i i don't i need to get a message across this is my mission yeah. in life my passion for writing is comes from that yeah. And so I need to find a way to express that. And that's not going to be in a really limited, say, for example, romance yeah. book, right? There's nothing wrong with that. I just don't know how to do it. I mean, I've tried. I just can't do it. So I, yeah, the books all have a message. Yeah. I, I have trouble sticking to uh, one genre, particularly my, my first three books were sort of sci-fi dramas. But I mean, there's just so, there's so much in there that it sort of uh it does delve into other so it's sort of thrillers adventures um comedy horror it's a, it's all <laughs> it's all sort of thrown in there i am um, you've done quite a lot of um copy and line editing i wanted to talk to you particularly today about crafting a sentence and um and sort of common pitfalls and uh, common things that you've spotted that people perhaps uh, struggle with. Mm. Where do I begin? Um, <laughs> there's so many things. I I, um, I will say, perhaps to begin with, that I write, at least I think I do, people may dispute this, I write very fast-paced books. You know, there's a lot of action, a lot of adventure, a lot of uh, crime and, and uh, clue solving and chasing people down, you know. So I tend to write in very short paragraphs. 
generally yeah. speaking. I don't write long, flowery paragraphs. Um, I like that. I like that. Generally, ever. Although I, 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 you know, one day I'm hoping to try an actual, what would you call it? Like a, you know, literary fiction, I guess, yeah. piece, and in which I will probably try that a bit more. But that's not what I'm writing right now. Yeah. So that said. I think that, you know, there's a place for the longer paragraph. Until you get to the point where you're information dumping and you have these endless, you know, beautiful flowery scenes um, over and over again, which will take away, which will definitely disrupt the action if you have some, if you have action going on. And I, I frequently tell authors you know, please take out this piece because it is dragging down your action. It is breaking it up. And you've just, in my opinion, lost your reader. They're like, yeah. how did we end up admiring the sunset when all heck is breaking loose? I mean, no, <laughs> don't do that. There are places for that, but not, not when you're trying to keep the action going, keep your reader, you know, really moving through a scene. So that's a pitfall I see a lot. Um, dialogue tags are enormous. It's, it's, I see that this uh, just constantly that the dialogue tags are used too frequently, used to with too many different kinds of verbs that are not actually speaking verbs. Um, yeah. For example, you know, he he is speaking to a woman in a romance and, you know, saying something snarky. And instead of saying he said, someone will say he shrugged or he smirked. Well, those are not dialogue tags. I agree. Yeah, those are okay. actions. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's quite often yeah. in, in my writing. I have um, she said as she shrugged her shoulders. That's much better. Yeah, yeah, that's a. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Definitely. I'm in a similar line to you, really. The writing for me and for my reading and for my writing, um, it's got to be full of pace. Really, over descriptive prose is sort of. Oh, it just sends me to sleep. I, I hate it. Yeah, I mean, you want to, you know, properly set your novel. There's a place for this. Um, I try to insert, um, you know, descriptions of where a character is is walking, for example, and try to, for example, Adam's Witness takes place when it's in March, and it's a particularly cold March. And I'm trying to set the scene that everybody is still bundled up and shivering and there, you know, snow, windrows of snow and all this kind of stuff. But I try to, you know, sort of wiggle that in a paragraph at a time, not in, you know, yeah. pages uh, full of it. Yeah, yeah so just be, slight yeah. Hint, hints rather than uh, <laughs> hints rather than going out of the top with description. Yeah. Um, whether you've seen this or not, I think in, in editing I've done of uh, other people's books from... Uh, from writing groups and the likes. Oh yeah. Um, we hear so much about the phrase show and tell, uh, show not tell. And um, in their writing, they show and tell. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean by that? Yeah. I, I, I do, yeah. Um, I think it's, it's uh, you probably pick one. I, You know, um, we're very focused on showing versus telling and I think that's appropriate to a point. I think sometimes you just have to tell the reader what exactly yeah. is going on too. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's not get too vague about things either because we, we want people to grasp what we're on about as well, yeah. right? And um, yeah, I, I, I see that a lot. I see people saying, you know, describing someone's shock and horror at, at something that has happened sort of, you know, three different ways, you know, the, the face turned red and the mouth opened into a great big O and she was shivering all over and, and, and. Um, let's try to boil that down and maybe do two instead of five of those, you know? <laughs> so because you do get to the point where you're just showing a bit too much. Yeah, I think, I think yeah. perhaps, um, is it a problem where people perhaps who are very good at their craft are sort of artistically trying to put more metaphors in and more description and lose sight of the reader? Perhaps. That I would argue that does happen sometimes. Um, I, hmm. But you know, this I do have my personal biases too. Like maybe some yeah. people do like to read, you know, beautiful descriptive prose just for the joy of reading it. Yeah. And you know, and there's room for that as well. If you're if, for very good writers, it is a hard thing to pull off in my experience. So yeah, I try to. Uh, 
yeah, I um I kill quite a few darlings as I go along and say, um, please shorten this or um that's the 15th dialogue tag in this conversation. Maybe we could just eliminate some. So yeah, keep it tight, you know. Yeah. yeah. But then, you know, I'm a journalist too. So there's a bias there as well. Get to the story, tell the story, even if that means showing, right? Yeah. Let's get it out there. Let's go. <laughs> Well, I think with uh, with your journalist uh, journalism head on, um, that's that's very much stick to the facts, and <laughs> it's quite a clash, isn't it? I did a journalism course, and um, I realised no, I don't want to do that. I want to create my own stories, so I sort of uh, came away from that, as it were. Journalism has, um, teaches you a great many things that do come in handy when you're writing a novel. Um, and there are some things that it is not helpful for. But, yeah. you know, um, you, you will come into it with a good grasp of grammar and spelling and pace and how, how not to bury the lead. And that actually is crucial in novel writing. If you are telling a story about, you know, some, I don't know, some group of people who are under threat and running away and, and yeah. you know, all hell is breaking loose, don't give me you know, I don't know, eight or 10 pages of background first, right? Yeah. It's don't back into it. Tell us what is happening. You can, you can insert the details as you go. Um, I think, yeah, I think going into the detail is key. I'm just wondering whether to be very brave, because I know you're very experienced. Um, I'm wondering whether to show you my first chapter of my whip. What do you reckon? If you like, I'd be happy to take a look. Were, I do have actually quite a, quite a bit uh, for friends. Like I'll take a look at the first chapter or two, and you know, give it give an opinion and see what they think. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's um it's YA fiction. Um, let me see if I can uh, share this without messing everything up. Hang on. Hopefully, I'll get big enough for you to read. That would help. Is that um? I don't know if this will work over the thingy. Let's have a look. Is that? Let me. Uh, I see it. Can you make, can you see that? Okay. Yeah. You're in a little bit bigger. Nope. Is that okay? Shall I shall I read it or shall I put a read aloud on? How about that? If you, it's okay. I'm all, if you like. I'm already on the third paragraph. Ah, got it. I'll let you carry on then, yeah. Um, I'll sort of talk to the uh, audience for those that are listening along on uh, podcast. Um, yeah, the um, the story is the healer. And uh, in way I fiction, it's standalone at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. Looking to probably release it um, late, sort of, uh, or late summer, early autumn. Um, it does give reference to the Catch a Leaf story, which um, is an interesting one to talk on. Um, right then, uh, how are you getting on? Do you need to me uh, go oh, a bit well, further down? I, I very rapidly grasp, uh, you know, what Jake's issue is. And, yeah, I'm getting all the details about how he's suffering. Is that about where you were at? Or? No. Okay, I would, hmm, I think maybe there's a bit too much building if you, My, I, would do I might want to, I might want to get in some action fairly soon after this. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm learning a lot about Jake and I like him and he's interesting. Um, could we go from solving, put something before the solving glitches in the latest game yeah. part i think you need something there that um brings in some drama trauma uh concern action right around okay. that. um yeah what we've got that that solving glitches maybe that was sort of that's not necessary there at that point um and then it, it turns to um his girlfriend so advice to steer clear of the hospital for fear of another chest infection and then he talks about Caitlin. And then we get the phone rang, which is sort of uh, effectively about 600 words in. Mm -hmm. 
Is that probably a bit slow? Maybe just a wee bit. I would. I, I'm just. If you can take out maybe one of those paragraphs before yeah, yeah. you get to the phone ringing, just to yeah. bring it up a, a little bit. Yeah. Sort of overselling the fact. You can sick, send it so. to me privately, and I'll take another look. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I've seen at the moment. I've just edited the first two chapters. Looks really clean. I'm not seeing any. I mean, very quick look. I'm not seeing any uh, significant errors here at all. No, that's good. Well, we had. Um, let's just take it back off again so we can see you. That's it. Um, are you are you familiar with Reedsy? Yeah, fa fairly. Um, I get I get emails from them all the time, and once in a while, I'll participate in one of their webinars or whatever you call them. Got you. Oh, you've been on the show up yet? Yeah. I'm sorry. Have you been on their show or you were just watching along? No, yeah. no. Just watching along. Okay. Um, because they've had they've had sort of editing sort of workshops and that's people yes. are sending editing. Yeah. Sending work for editing. And I've sent mine in and they've never selected mine. Um, and the ones they select, I think, are probably not the best ones. Because they want to they want to show what they can do because they're selling an editing service, I guess. Yeah. So I think that could well that, be. And they want to show you something so that they can also demonstrate how to fix it. If there's nothing wrong with it, it's not a lot of fun to have it on the show, I expect. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I guess maybe the reason they haven't shown mine is because it's it's not that bad, I guess. That's <laughs> I think if yeah, it was really bad, then yeah, show I've, I've listened to them, but I haven't been in them, so to speak. Yeah. And some yeah. of them are really interesting. I was particularly interested in one where they were doing um, book titles. And the first paragraph, um, it was really well done, actually. It was quite instructive. Yeah. Now, now what they were doing, what they were doing really good, um, I think from from when I ran a, a writing group, um, sort of editing other people's work, it does really good for your own work, I think. And um, I like to think I've fixed a lot of those issues. I like to think I fixed a lot of those issues, but uh, were you saying don't bury the lead? Um, just coming back to that, sort of keep keeping on on topic, I guess, and uh, keeping the main ca main character flowing in the story and not getting distracted. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, we could go on a lot about point of view as well, um, but um, if if you don't have something happening pretty quickly in the first chapter, if you don't have like an inciting incident, if you don't have something uh, that hints at the very least in the first first line at, at, the, at the tension that is to come, you will not hold the reader's attention. Yeah. So I think that your, your character here in this, in this snippet that you show me, for example, you get, you get the picture pretty quickly as kids sick, right? Yeah. Um, and that is going to be a problem. So you're like, oh, how sick is he? How is this going to affect his life? And, you know, this is good. Um, but regurgitating, uh, you know, a lot of history, whether it is made up history or real history, and starting a book with, you know, long ago, <laughs> these terrible <laughs> things happened. And then this and then that. And that was still affecting so-and-so today. Um, you're not, yeah, you're not going to keep the keep the person's attention so i think uh, i think for that taking away the history and uh, perhaps slot it in later perhaps yeah i think so i i tend to write um i, I tend to write my first chapters not all of them but most of them in medias res so the first yeah. the first chapter is usually quite short and it's like really really action filled like Boom, you know, and you don't need to know the characters yet. You need to know what they are. You know, is it a police officer? Or is it a priest? Or who is it? For sure. Yeah. But you don't have to um, fully explain who the character is in the first chapter. You have to hint yeah. at it. But I, but I just start the book right in the middle of the action and go hard and then explain as I go along. You yeah. know, put everything in context. Yeah, I that's just my opinion that that works better. <laughs> Certainly yeah, it no, I think, more when I pick up a book, you know. I think attention span of people has become less and less, hasn't it? What with the uh, social media generation and people want to have it straight away, don't they? I so think I think, so. uh, 
yeah I'll, I'll send i'll send you that for you to have a deeper look but yeah take... a, sure send it along yeah, you have um... <laughs> you, I, I love i love uh i love throwing things out there for people to uh tell me what they think that's uh that's what it's all about and i think the uh the joy of writing is um what is it for you the joy of writing tell me hmm that's a good question i've been doing it all my life right um <laughs> There, well, there are a number of things about that. At first, you know, I remember be, clearly being in grade six. I can remember my teacher standing there and handing back assignments. And she gave it back to me and I said, I'm going to be a writer. That's what I'm going to be. Now, how am I going to make a living at this? Right. So my first passion was really was journalism. I went to university and got a political science degree and so on. Um, yeah. which is pretty, was really standard in, in those days when, when I was coming up. And it was about, for me at the time, it was not just about doing something that I actually could do even then. I was a decent writer, you know, and I knew I was. And the teacher said I was. And I'm like, okay, I have this skill. Let's go. But I wanted to change the world, you know. It, it, was, a, it, was, a, it was a dual passion for me. And I don't think that's changed. I think yeah. I'm still I'm still doing this because I want people to see the world the way I think it should be and yeah. maybe make a difference somehow. Um, and, the, you know, it, the um, inciting incident for Adam's Witness occurred many years ago when I was still working for the Daily, um, when one of the cathedrals in town wouldn't allow the gay choir here in town to perform there. Now, I've had a lot of pushback on this, both positive and negative from readers that, well, choirs should be performing in the sanctuary anyway. What are you talking about? And I'm like, well, that's his maybe. But if you're an Anglican or a Catholic cathedral and you let everybody else rent the space and sing in your sanctuary because you need the money, and, but you don't allow a gay choir, that's a problem, right? Yeah. So I wrote a column about this because I was incensed about it, <laughs> furious. <laughs> and I did have a friend on the on the uh, uh, who was part of the choir, which I call the Pride Choir in the book. Yeah. Um, and I wrote a column about it, and oh my goodness, it just all hell broke loose. Like I was on the phone for three days, people phoning <laughs> me, and you know, good and bad, and it, it was wild. And I I don't know. You know, 10 years later, that was still bugging me. Well, it wasn't quite 10 years later. Yeah, maybe it was. Um, it was still bothering me, and I wanted to comment on it. And so I just raised the stakes in my book where the Pride Choir is kicked out of the church because this is not acceptable that we would have a gay choir. And um, in it, what happens is that the bishop dies, and then they begin investigating his death, and the sort of point is that I investigate why people become homophobic yeah, and sort of the solutions, you know, to the mystery uh, sort of reel out from that. And that's, that's just what I do. So the joy is finding the right word for sure. And being able to sit here and just hammer out, you know, stories and books. Um, but it's also trying to make a point, that hopefully reflects my view of society that yeah. I also hope is right and just and, and inclusive, I guess, yeah. you know, um, this is, this is my goal. Yeah. Yeah. I hope uh, that's, I hope that makes sense. I don't know. Some, I don't know. What's your no, joy in writing? I mean, where does that come from? Well, uh, the, um, I think for me, for me, it's a strange one because, um, at, oh. as a young, in younger years, um, I, I didn't write. I didn't write at all. I didn't over read. Um, and I've sort of been busy with my career as an improvement specialist for manufacturing companies. Um, but I had these stories in my head and uh, I just had to start getting them down. And and then once that started, hey. like, there's another story comes in your head. And at the moment, I have like three, four, five stories that I, I want to write. I just haven't got, hmm. I haven't got to them yet. It's the the creative uh, um, story in my head 
um, just needs to come out. They have to express. Yeah. 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 No, I feel like, I feel like that too. Although it's less about creativity for me, for some reason, (laughs) some of it is, I guess, but most of it is. um, I I think I've calmed down. I think I've calmed down a little bit, but I mean, I I did get to a point where if, if I wasn't right, if I hadn't written anything for, or hadn't worked on my books, for for a few days i would get sort of all sort of tetchy it's like yeah. I, I, I need to get back get to that it. itch right get me back to my computer and then you have to find finish, the time so there's that there's there's so many people that don't finish things and um i'm very much a finisher so uh for me if i'm if i think it's not happening i'll sort of get a bit sort of mad with myself and i need to get back at it um i want to talk um before we finish two more things i want to talk about i want to talk about ai but uh, before we talk about AI, I want to talk about price point. Mm. Um, it, it's quite difficult in some ways to uh, to pitch the right price for your for your writing. When I when I look at your books on there, the price point on book one is quite low. I think. I'm so, also uh, watch, yeah, watch it's very low that. right now. I've had it on sale for about a month, and uh, I'm not doing that anymore as of. Today, end of today, I'm changing it back. It's Monday. Ah, um, oh, so it's been an offer then, yeah. Yeah, I, it's, you know, I wrote a blog about this quite some time ago um, entitled Free Sucks, Fight Me. And a lot of people think that uh, free is a good idea um, to get the books into more people's hands. And, you know, ultimately we will have more read through and everybody will be happy. And I don't think that works anymore. I think it did at one point. Um, The other thing is that it infuriates me that we should be expected to give our work away. And I get, I grasp that there are millions of indie authors out there, authors of all kinds, and we're all, you know, competing for those eyes. But, you know, I must have given away 25,000 copies of Adam's Witness. And, yeah, okay, I did okay. Like, I did get some readership out of that. I did get some reviews out of that. This is a long time ago, though. This is seven years ago, right? Times change. And I don't agree with free anymore. And I think we, uh, you know, if it were up to me, a lot of people may disagree with this. But if it were up to me, we would all just stop that. Stop it because we're building an expectation into the market that our work is not worth a cup of co- the price of a cup of coffee. That is crap, right? So yeah. I um, I strongly object to that, and I think that you know our eBooks should be at least two ninety nine, three ninety nine, yeah. and that paperbacks should be what you can afford to sell them at with a profit after the printing and shipping costs. Yeah. So. Um, my books, um, well, it depends which book because they're not all the same price. But, you know, I, I try to get at least a four, three, four dollar profit off it because how does one make a living at this? You know, well, generally one does not, but it can be part of your living, yeah. but not if you're charging rock bottom prices. And I also think it's obscene and unfair. I mean, if you don't want to read the book, don't read the book. But don't just take it for free and, you know, shove it in a corner. And how does that help anybody? It doesn't help you because you didn't read the book yeah. and it doesn't help the author, you know. Well, I had this conversation with Jen, uh, Jen McLeod, and yeah. uh, she was saying if, quite often when people have a book for free, they don't read it straight away. That's right. It rots on their Kindle, right? And yeah. because where else, or, or their phone or whatever, and they got it for free. So what value did they just put on your work? That's it, nothing at and all. And why would you bother reading it, you know, unless you're really motivated? And if you're really motivated, why didn't you buy it? <laughs> exactly. See, like the logic escapes me, right? So I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good decision, I think. That's a good decision. Um, I want to talk very briefly about uh, AI. Um, where are you on all of that? Because there's there's a, a, a big suite, isn't that? Like I use Pro Writing Aid, which oh, um, yeah. mm-hmm. is, is that editing software or is that AI? Where, where do you think? Do you think that's... I, well, I think that's editing software. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Um, so when this really became a topic like very loudly it kind of went poof onto the scene really uh, for for um authors anyway and 
and for general consumption, right? We've had AI forever, but you know, when it when we were start able to use it for a pittance online, and that really, really steamed up last year. And I thought, you know, I'm going I need to dive into this because I need to understand what this is. Can it help me? Is it completely uh, amoral and ridiculous to use it? Where do I stand? But you can't don't know where you stand until you can see what it can do. Yeah. And so I did both um, ChatGBT and I did um, I, oh, a, a graphics, a, a, you know, a program that does, you know, give me the a picture of a woman walking up to a church kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, and you know, I don't know. On a limited basis, I can't see the harm in it. I know some people are having quite a lot of success with it as a research tool, although always, I, in my view, should always double check what it has given you. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it's a way to find information much more quickly. Yeah. Um, I think that's okay. I think the wider problem is if we all just sort of dive into it and go, you know, woohoo, um, we have new tools that can do anything we want. We There are two things about this. There's the morality of the way the information has been aggregated by the AI companies, which in many cases, it, you know, without royalty, without recognition. And I'm not a scientist, I'm, you know, a computer scientist by any stretch, and I don't know how far that goes, but that concerns me enormously about everybody's work if they can do it to you know jody pico they can do it to us very easily not that they would necessarily want to but they could um same goes for artists though right like if we're yeah, stealing other people's I'm photography thinking, and other work yeah so i'm a, i'm a bit alarmed about it because it and it also you know what, what what are we looking at in the future how well, will these programs be able to think? Will they outthink us? And maybe that, that sounds a little paranoid, but I just don't know. And I have deep concerns about it. Um, it is incredibly easy to use, and that's another thing. It just it's just astonishing what it what it blurts out or draws for you. How can like, source it's just all there for you? Yeah, how smart are these things? It's I think it's quite it's it's alarming, and we need we need to take care here and make you know protect ourselves to the extent possible, which I don't even know how to do. But um, it it worries me. I have to say, yeah, I, yeah, and I don't know if I think its use is ethical. I would never, ever. I would I might try it for research. Um, clearly, I would never use. It even a word of it in any of my books. If, if I can't stand up and say, I wrote every word in here, yeah, yeah. every single word, this is mine. I would never, ever feel good about selling it. No, I, no. I just couldn't look myself in the mirror, period. No. Difficult. For what it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe, this has been brilliant. Um, we have run out of time, but um, it's been excellent. And thank you very much for your comments on my... Uh, my uh yeah my do send it along i'll fire off my email no, to you. Have a look. um but um thanks very much for coming on it's been a pleasure um, thank you for having insights me. there um thanks for coming on cheers thank you simon take care bye-bye